Welcome to the ride. I promise that this game is going to be full of exciting changes and wonderful new opportunities. I'm lying, of course, but then we are headed for the politics floor. But first, I need to take a little straw poll. How many people will be playing? I now know that there are three of you. That makes sense. Is this the first time on the ride for any? Oh, goody. I've always enjoyed playing with virgins, and we'll be sure to make your first time easier with some extra instructions during the game. Player one, may I have your name, please? Perfect, thank you. Player two, please enter your name now. Ah, Tricky Dick, welcome. Just for you, we have 18 minutes of silence in the middle of the game. Please type in your name, Player 3. Yes, thank you. Player 1, buzz in on the letter Q, as in quarter flash. Player 2, your buzzer is the letter B. That's B, as in bug juice. Player 3, your buzzer is the letter P, as in podunk. I'm so sorry to say that our time together is finally over. Enjoy your ride. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack is brought to you by Inoffensive Eddie's Bland Suit Emporium. Inoffensive Eddie says, if they remember you were in the room, your suit's too loud. And now, here's your host, the one, the only, Cookie! Welcome to the game. It's nice to see ya. Well, actually it isn't, but you know what all the great politicians say, every hello is a vote. <laughs> Okay, first off, gotta give you your screws. Here's a bunch for all three of you. Now listen up, and I'm gonna tell you why I'm passing these out. The first time a question comes up that you think might be on the difficult side, buzz in immediately and start pounding on the S key. That's S for screws. You're gonna be shooting these puppies into the screen, totally annihilating the question and answers. Then you're gonna make your opponent answer the question whether they can read any of it or not. So if you're not the one pounding on the S key, you better be trying to read everything fast before it's gone. And that's Flakjack. <laughs> Oh, remember, do as I say, uh, this is not a democracy. Okay, player two, grab a question, Here's your category. You can't spell politics without P-O-T. Okay, play ball. Say you're invited to a joint session. Who's the guest of honor at this party? The president, the vice president, the speaker of the house? Player two, grab it. A joint session of Congress brings the House and Senate together to hear the President make a speech. So the President might speak, but he doesn't inhale. Player 2, Hitman! Holy something! Here's your category. In politics, you must lie like a cheap rug. You know, back when Washington and Jefferson were president, men wore those silly wigs. And Bill Clinton's haircut is always a hard news item, so I was thinking... If Bill Clinton wore the last wig president on his head, with what dashing new look could he impress the ladies? His mane of Monroe, his forelock of Fillmore, his coiffure of Cleveland, or his tousle of Taft? Take a shot, player two. It's just about the only way for people to notice Millard Fillmore. The thing is, if you notice that it's a wig, etiquette says you're supposed to act as if you're a member of the know-nothing party. Okay, player two, what's this one gonna be worth? We're calling this one... The Capitol Dome Spring a Leak. Okay, you ready for this question? 39.97 is on the table, here it is. If it begins raining cats and dogs in the Capitol, from what will the lawmakers have to protect themselves? Temps, lobbyists, reporters, or leftover bills? Player two, it's yours! Damn cat and dog lobbyists, they ought to be spayed. Player one, hit it! Oh, excuse me. Player three, player three, do it! Meow meow! 
Meow, Senator. Meow, meow, budget cuts, meow. Uh, Renator, what is wrong with ruling about the shortage of real crowns? <laughs> Please take time to examine a right answer. <laughs> Annoying leftover or stray bills that deal with minor issues are called cats and dogs. But having all those cats and dogs around really covers up the everyday stink of corruption. It's up to you, player three. Hit your buzzer to select a value. Okay, nice shot. Here's your category. He'd make Jesse Helms look like a liberal black woman. Hey, you know how on the Dukes of Hazard, Boss Hogg is a crooked politician and Roscoe P. Coltrane is a corrupt sheriff? Well, say Boss Hogg runs for president with Roscoe as his running mate. According to the 12th Amendment, what will be true? Bo and Luke couldn't run against them, Roscoe wouldn't have to be a U.S. citizen, Boss Hogg would have to be old and white, or electoral voters couldn't vote for them both. Take a shot, player two. The Twelfth Amendment states that if the president and vice president are from the same state, then electoral voters in that state can't vote for both of them. What? You want a joke? You think the Constitution is supposed to be funny? Player two, what's this one gonna be worth? Hit your buzzer and tell us. Bingo. If you're a liar and need a job, consider politics. So L I A R S L I A R S L I A R S or sign up for law school. -o. Welcome to Liars. All right, let me give you a quick explanation of how this works. You're gonna get a series of puzzles. When you think you know the answer to a puzzle, wait until the first letter of that answer highlights on the screen, and then nail your buzzer. If you're right, you get 500 bucks, and you take that letter, but you lose 500 every time you're wrong. Be the first to collect all the letters, and you win the bonus. All right, is that clear? Well, it better be, because we're going. To tear or to scam. Let her rip. Short for Sylvester. You're a sly one. Demise and blank proposal. Ace it. Movie star's profession. Active. Yeti is the blank snowman. Abominable but great. Help, I've sprung off blank. Take a leak. Stars of Willard and Ben. Rats. Blank lines and videotape. I always say yes to sex. One letter and a bonus if you're the player two. It's bliss. Ignore it. Pastor Prince Crime. Max first hit single. Oscar the Grouch is back worm. Player two. Player two, you got the lead. Okay, player three, hit your buzzer. Okay, you got something. Here's what we're looking at. Always a bridesmaid, never the president. Let's get going. Who died and made the president pro tempore boss of the country? The president, the vice president, the speaker of the house, or all of the above? Player two, it's you. If the president dies, the VP gets to take his place. It's kind of like Prince Charles waiting for the queen to kick. <laughs> player one, player three, who's gonna grab it? All yours, player one. 
The president pro tempore backs up the VP as head of the Senate. He's third in line for the presidency following the vice president and the speaker of the House. But don't think he doesn't have a plan for redecorating the executive washroom just in case. Player one, it's up to you, snag it. I like to call this category... Bring a sweater, it's gonna be a cold war. Here's the question. If the arms race had been decided by racing arms, the United States could have won by any of these margins except... Player one! Player 3, two. All right, let's check it out. The radius is one of the bones in your forearms. Oh, gee, it would be pretty cool having forearms. I could, I could hold a lot of, uh, you know, stuff. <laughs> player one, player, player two, grab it. The tibia is part of the leg, which we use to kick the Soviets' ass. Yeah. You're next, China! Player 2, pick us a question value. Your category is... Swift Justice in the Food Court. Now, everyone knows about the famous landmark Supreme Court abortion rights case Roe v. Wade, right? Well, imagine a second Roe v. Wade case reaches the U.S. Supreme Court. What landmark issue could the case be about? Waterfowl jurisdiction, fish egg rights, green vegetable abuse, or cheese equity? Player one, hit it! Listen here, duck, you'll have to cease and desist right now. No jurisdiction? I'll show you jurisdiction. Come here! Player three, man. So you want four. Okay. Oh, for crying out loud, cheese equity was decided in the 1939 landmark ruling of Wisconsin v. Gouda. My god, why don't you just crack open a book sometime? <laughs> Player three is- Wait, gotta buzz in first! Hey, I said buzz in first! What are you, hi? Buzz in! Watch and learn. <laughs> Roe is another name for fish eggs. Your honors, I would attempt to show that my client, as god-awful tasting as he is, deserves the same rights as the rest of us. Player 3, select the value. Good one, Player 3. Okay, Player 3 gets this or that here. Player 1 and 2, you get to watch. The category for this this or that is... You win some, you loser. Okay, I'm gonna read off the names of seven guys, and for each one, I want you to tell me if he won a presidential election, lost a presidential election, or both. If it's the name of a guy who only won an election, press one. If it's the name of a guy who only lost an election, press two. If it's both, press three. If you're not sure, press four. You're gonna get some money for each right answer, and you lose cash for a wrong answer or any you don't get to. Okay, you have 30 seconds to get all of them. When the wire fills up, you're out of time. Let's do it. Quentin, one lock for both. Push! Throw! Reagan! Carter! Ooh, damn, time's up. Now then, I gotta deduct some cash for the one you never answer. And what an absolutely miserable effort. We're talking Stinkola here. Player two's our leader. Okay, here we go. Okay, player one, pick a winner. Coming up. Built like a brick mill house. You know how Richard Milhouse Nixon said, I am not a crook, when in fact he was as crooked as they come? Well, 
What transparent lie could Milhouse from The Simpsons tell the American people? I am not Homer Simpson's drinking buddy. I am not Chief Wiggum's son. I am not Bart's player two. It's yours. Now write it on the chalkboard a hundred times. Thing is, I always thought Milhouse looked like Kissinger. I mean, with the, the big nose, the glasses, you know. Okay, player two, grab a question value. Buzz in. Look, you take your sweet time, there's consequences. All right, here's your category. Over-the-counter culture. Okay, get out your little round glasses and your tie-dyes, because I've got a little counterculture phrase for you to figure out. Turn on, blank, blank, and drop out. All right, which of the fake is... Player two, who do you want to screw? You gotta answer it, player three. Four. Okay, let's see it. Tune out? Yes, you did. <laughs> player one's in first. No! Player two, grab it. Turn on, tune in, and drop out was ex-Harvard professor Timothy Leary's slogan in the 60s. And then at his death in 1996, Leary urged internet users to log on and sit in while he dropped out. All right, player two, buzz in, give us a value. The category is... Color me impeached. You know how the book Primary Colors tries to pass as fiction even though it's obviously a satire of Bill Clinton's primary campaign? Well, if the thinly veiled characters in Primary Colors had been named for the three primary colors used in video imaging, who would not have been included? President Red, Secretary of State Blue, Senator Green, or... Player One! Though artists include yellow in the primary color palette, video imaging uses red, blue, and green as the three primary colors. But considering all the bad press, Clinton, uh, I mean the fictional president's primary colors are uh, black and blue. Player one, you have the honors. Welcome to the Jack Attack. I'm gonna be throwing a bunch of words up on the screen. Buzz in when you see two items on the screen that match. Each time you're right, you make money. Each time you're wrong, you lose it. Now here's the thing. Not any two items that go together are necessarily a match. Remember the key. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. The land of milk and alphabets. Don't forget, the match has to fit that clue. Good luck. Player one, did did you have a seizure there or something? I I, I seriously, I was afraid you were gonna injure yourself. And wait, wait a minute, how is that you're not in last place? Uh, oh my God, player three, you're you're terrible. One is for the heartache. 
you've ever been in love or just had to do your taxes. I'm itemizing the deductions you've taken through the years. This album is for you. I've got more than $400 of interest in you. Then I showed her my long form check here. As sweet as your first kiss. If you would like a dollar of your love. And as painful as your first audit. To go to my election campaign. Tax Cuts, the new album by Darren Fick. In stores now. You should take another deduction for being blind to my love. Start eating me right. I need your whole heart, not just two percent. Oh, cow, I long for you every night. When you moved into our cottage, I said to myself, Hey, she's the one. You didn't have to milk it or egg me on, but our chances are. Skim to none. Give me your true and utter love. All else pales in comparison. I need your true and utter love. Don't you dare refuse me some. 